and so it is to rest in the longing of the heart, in the depth of the longing, until the longing shines as fulfillment, as the glory. Because just that the longing has been given by grace, so too will be seen, be known the fulfillment of the longing. Because in truth, the longing and the fulfillment are one. It is to look for God, look for God, look for God, until your looking is so one-pointed that what you see is that right in front of you is God, is the glory, is all that has been longed for, is right here, and it has been here right all along, all along, <laughs> it is all there is. If we have a quest, it is to discover where is the sameness here? Where is the knowing of oneness? We already are this. And our quest is to discover where the knowing of this is shining. It is shining at the source. It is shining in the essence nature. <laughs> it is shining in the heart. It is shining in the being that you are. What you can be sure of is that it's not shining in the play of the world. <laughs> it is not shining in things and people and experiences. It is not. And yet we could even say that once you come to know this truth, as you come to know this essence nature, you do also see that it is shining in absolutely everything. But this cannot be known intellectually. You cannot rest in freedom, in some kind of partial intellectual understanding where the mind says, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, know, I, know, I know that. Because that isn't the truth. That isn't wholeness. There will never be freedom in, in the mind's imagining of an intellectual understanding. And so we're here. We're here because the longing is so alive, that the longing is so alive. And we want to find out what is this longing truly longing for? And, and how can we bring forward the shining fulfillment of this longing in this moment here now? We have to look, we have to look and listen in a really special way. And that special way is, is simple, it's simplicity. We have to look and listen in utter simplicity, in utter innocence, in utter openness, where we let go of any threads of thinking that we know what we are longing for. Where we let go of any threads of thinking that we know what any of this is all about, and we surrender to a flow of grace where there is the knowing of nothing, where there's a letting go, and there's not a manual or instruction or how to about how to let go. But somehow the letting go is about being here so fully that the threads of projection dissolve into a depth of presence where our protection and defenses that create a separate sense of separation just dissolve, merge into the remembering of oneness. And so these words, these words are not an instruction. They're not a teaching. They're not a how-to. They are the direct invitation it's like the innermost divine grace that you are is reaching into your heart, into what you think you are and saying, no, no, this way, this way. I am, I am coming to you from inside you. You might imagine with the mind that I am outside 
but no, 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 I am coming to you here from right inside your innermost being, right? This is not an external radio transmission. This is radio wave, infinite, eternal being. It's coming from right inside you. And so it is just to attune to where this is coming from, where these words are coming from. And in the attunement, it's like a resonant recognition where the recognition and the resonance is felt in your consciousness. We could say in your nervous system, we could say in your heart, but there's a felt sense of recognition that starts to stir an aliveness. It might start to stir the longing more fully. It might start to bring this glimmering recognition of fulfillment or where the fulfillment is already, already known. It might bring just more of a shining. Yes, yes, this, the glory that is. So we're not creating more concepts that direct the attention into more thinking. We're not creating more experiences. The mind could even find all this a little boring <laughs> because it's not really offering the kind of excitement that the mind wants. And yet the pull of the heart and the resonance of recognition is so much stronger than anything that the mind can pull us into in distraction. So really, it is protection and defense that pulls us away into distraction, into the mind's ideas of what all of this is about. And even the ways that the mind says, well, I like it that way. I, I like spiritual teachings like this because they, they make me feel good. They give me something, right? We have to be so careful about are we really receiving a depth of resonance that is carrying us inward? Or are we just trying to find a spiritual way to satisfy the me and the mind, right? What you can be sure of is that the resonance of pure truth that is guiding you inwards, it doesn't give you anything. It doesn't make you dependent on anything. It doesn't create a disciple out of you. It doesn't offer you something in the future. It invites you in this immediate moment to know the glory of your own true nature. It invites you into the purity and divinity of your own heart right now. It does not imagine that God is outside of you. It shows you that God is right here. And if you are truly longing for God, for the divine, for Ma, for the glory and the fullness of yourself, then keep your attention right here in the simplicity of being and it will be revealed how you are this. And you don't really need anything external. And yet we are given the grace of guidance and support, companionship that helps us to turn inward and to really, really rest. And really this kind of guidance and companionships, it comes through beings that have recognized this, that have recognized this truth and say, well, if I am this, then you are too. And not because there's a sense of having an experience, but a sense of knowing the absolute wholeness that you are what I am, that you are the same. I need every single part of you to be resonating at the same frequency of truth, 
to feel this fullness of heart, right? So in a way, when, as we really open, we can know this truth, but we, we don't just shut out <laughs> everything and say, oh, well, here, here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm here. No, 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 it cannot work like that because there is only one. So the knowing of this truth translates into being a companion that says, you too, you too, come, come. Join me here. Join me here. Know that you too are this. Jump in. Jump in to yourself. Jump into the being. Jump into the light. There is no way and it's not out there. Just keep resting in your longing. Keep longing and longing and longing till you're so squeezed <laughs> in the depth of your longing. You cannot give any more to this longing. And my goodness, does the shining fulfillment shine when the longing is deep enough? You see, this longing has to be so deep and true and one-pointed. Let your longing be everything. Let your longing be what carries you into a depth of surrender and submission where you want only God you find out there is only God, only God. And then the knowing, oh, this is all only God. And then somehow the flow comes to share that you too are this. You are what I am. We are the same. Find the sameness, find the glory, find the spark, find the light find the love and know this truth as your own, as your very own. I am you, I am yours. We are one. <laughs> we cannot ever, ever be apart. It is absolutely impossible. Whatever the appearance on the surface of life looks like, we are sharing it in the one heart. It is our judgments and beliefs and our protections that keep us separate. So let us come to the holy work, the holy moment where it's all seen through. It's never ever about anything outside of you. It's to bring every single thought that seems to be about out there or another into your own heart. Bring all the projections into your own heart. Bring everything in and discover your oneness is right here. When you stop fragmenting and sending it all out there as projections and judgments, protections, defenses, thinking that you know something, when all of the projections are pulled in, through meeting the feelings, instead of believing your thoughts, you find the oneness of your heart includes everything, everyone, and it's God, it's the glory, it's the glory that has been sought. And in the fullness of your own knowing, there is a shining wholeness that it cannot be complete. <laughs> <laughs> it's complete, but at the same time, it cannot be complete without all beings shining in this same re resonance, right? This is the, the dance of humanity. So while we are in a human life, what happens is that in the deepest truth, the Dharma has to be to share this. The gratitude has to be to sing the song of this. It couldn't be any other way because we are one. We are one. <laughs> we are one in the silence of being and we are one in the dance of life. We are one in all of it. 
but we cannot find this truth in the dance of life unless we are looking for it in the essence, if we are looking for it in the story, in the things, in the experiences, we will get lost trying to satisfy the me and the mind in more experiences. But this truth is here now and it's shining. And the invitation of this moment is to recognize this, to come to yourself, come holy to yourself. Be here, be here for yourself. Be here for this grace. Be here for this beauty. Be here for the revelation. Right? The revelation is here. The salvation, your salvation, is right here. Be here for it. Be here for yourself. No one can give this to you. No one can give this to you. You have to be here for the grace to carry you into yourself. And to be here is to feel the longing of the heart, the burning fire of your heart that is calling you into yourself. Really, I am here to just fan the flames and to pull you in more deeply to your own fire. To say that standing here in the fire of your own heart's longing is where this truth is. So do not come to the fire, look around and say, oh, nothing here of interest, not really what I'm looking for. Oh, a little boring, actually, right? You have to stay here, be bored, be so bored in the mind that you drop into the silence of the heart and you start to feel the shining glory and freedom in the silence, in the stop, in the stillness. Well, you know, in truth, as long as the mind is looking for something more, it will keep looking out there. It's the nature of consciousness. It will keep looking and looking and looking in the world of things until it crashes and burns, until something comes in that, that creates a depth of surrender. And of course, the glory can come in and create the surrender in the burning, burning of the longing. But it will usually create some kind of life situation that humbles us to ask the deeper questions. And so too, we can come to taste the resonance of this truth. And once we taste the resonance of this truth, we have a drop of blissful essence, one drop of blissful essence, one drop of the taste of grace is enough to intoxicate us and to carry us deeper and deeper and deeper. But where there are conditionings and protections, we will still be carried away in the samskaras and vasanas until we crash and burn again and we crash and burn again and we say this time, this time, this time. But you know, it's all just happening. It is consciousness, one consciousness that is guiding itself into this truth. And so this moment here now, there is nothing to do, nothing to learn, nothing to understand. It is just to know that right here, as you are, you are in a flow of grace, that you are touched right now. You are being called right now. You do not have to worry if you are being left behind. No, you are not. You would not be here. You are here because you are called. You are here because the longing is alive. You are here because you are already able to perceive the way in to yourself. And you are already saying yes. And these words come to fan the fire that is already ignited in the heart and guiding you into yourself right now. 
So consciousness is consciously guiding itself. It's all one. It's one flow. And whatever its configuration, whatever its laws of nature, it is guiding itself into itself. So nothing can ever be anything other than the way it is. You cannot get it wrong and you cannot get it right, right? So we have to let go of all ideas that we know anything about how this is unfolding. It is happening in the unseen and yet we are able to attune to the resonance because the resonance is our own consciousness. It is, our consciousness is our nervous system. We're able to attune to our own nervous system, our own consciousness, where we can feel the aliveness. We can attune and drop deeper into the attunement. The attunement is the felt sense of being. The felt sense of being here. The I am presence. How the presence is alive. It has a vibration or a frequency, a resonance, an aliveness. And the aliveness of the presence is your consciousness. It's the one consciousness, the one field that is awake and resonating right now. So the me imagines that it wants some kind of experience of an awakening, but it doesn't happen like that. What happens is that we have many, many, many moments of grace where we drop into the field, we drop into the silence, into the aliveness and into the recognition of our true essence nature. What we come to realize is that through the life, we have had so many of these moments, but there was nothing to guide us. There was nothing to say, this is who you are. You are that, you are this, you are the silence. This is your true nature, right? So it takes the flow of grace to bring, bring this pointing in the perfect moment, which is always now, where there's an alignment with the openness and relaxation into the being. And the voice that says, you are that. This is who you are, this being, this silent being. Now this voice can sing in the way this voice is singing, or it can sing inside you as the deep silence, right? It's never another. It's never outside of you. It's always the voice of your own inner knowing. And there is a moment where the voice of your own inner knowing sings in the silence of being, in a depth of remembering, where the resonance just comes alive and confirms itself. And it happens when the mind consciousness flatlines for a moment. It only takes a moment. But every moment that the mind flatlines, or let's say comes close to that, it brings us to a taste, a glimpse. But when the mind really stops for a moment, we have this possibility of seeing all the way through. When there is not a single, single movement of mind consciousness, of the vrittis, right? As the vrittis come to a complete standstill, stop. <laughs> Here's the revelation. So everything in our sadhana that we have generally learned in the world, the grace of sadhana, whether, whatever tradition it might be in, is that sadhana brings us to quiet and quietness, 
it slows us down. It slows us down through slowing the breath in the pranic body. It slows the energetic of the physicality. It allows us to be able to come to a depth of sitting in presence, which gets called meditation, to see through the meditator into the purity of meditation, which is like this one pointed concentration, focused, a depth where we can come to the transcendent field. So the sadhana is always pointing us to a quietening, a slowing, a deepening recognition of the presence. Really, it's an invitation that brings us to get quiet and quiet enough that we have the possibility of hearing the true voice. The silence is the true voice. <laughs> to really receive the silent nadam, the depth of being where the recognition whispers in the silent knowing, where there's no practitioner, no meditator, there's no one, there's no person. The end of experience brings us to a depth of true samadhi, which is being the transcendent field. So we can, we can enter the transcendent in an experience of meditation, but the deeper and more refined the nervous system in the recognition of, let's say, consciousness recognizing its own consciousness, being so consciously awake and aware of itself, in the felt sense, I am, I am, I am. The felt sense of existence that is the alive presence of being. Really, everything is calling us to come to a depth of quietness, of presence, where we can actually come to the possibility of the grace of a complete stop. the recognition that you are the silence. So we could say the flow of experience, even the flow of doing. The doing brings us to being. Meditation brings us to a depth of sitting in the presence, as the presence, in the being, as the being, to open in the silence to a depth of recognition, of being the being. So do not be looking for the mind to get something here as these words come because concepts are easily created. It is one of the movements of consciousness is that it can conceptualize. It can conceptualize. So let us just be silently aware of conceptualizing and not moving to believe the way that the mind might understand these words. Let us stay fresh. Let us rest here in the being. Let us stay completely untethered in the stillness, in the silence. And so there is a twofold <laughs> flow happening here. One flow is the natural flow of grace, the resonance that is the consciousness carrying itself in the unseen into itself. And the other flow is the pointings. In a way, it's all the same, but it's more of a, a different frequency, let's say. The frequency of the pointings on the surface are like the butterfly net. <laughs> The divine butterfly net, the pointings are, are, are like the nets that are, are shaking out there to see where there's a stillness, where there's a presence. There's a, a catching that in the net and pulling it in close, intimate, right? Into a depth of intimacy, into a deeper presence a deeper recognition that it's all happening right here in the unseen. 
the consciousness itself is consciously recognizing its true, finer frequencies. And in that, consciousness starts to naturally let go, starts to naturally merge its denser frequencies into the finer frequencies. It attunes. It's always attuning to the finest possibility that's in the environment. So we don't want to burden it with heavy, dense frequencies. And in this, we want to have a great awareness of the company that we keep and the environments that we, that we inhabit. Because the frequencies that we surround ourselves with can, can burden us, can dull us, can dull the true knowing. Right, So we want to come to the recognition of what does it feel like to, to, to open and feel the finer frequency, right? Where we're in the company of the fine frequencies, we attune to the greatest possibility with the finer frequencies in, let's say, companionship, whether it looks like this or whether it looks like being in nature. Nature is great companionship where we can attune with the awakeness of the environment in the deep silence, the stillness of trees, the flows of nature, the naturalness of the natural world, the oneness of ocean, the flow of river, the graced formations that the birds fly in, right? They're knowing the consciousness that knows, that creates patterns and gesture, that just knows how nature knows. We are like that. Nature knows. So it's like right now, the consciousness starts to merge as one consciousness, just like the birds that you see flying in a murmuration. The birds come in and they, the consciousness knows the birds are not standing and thinking, oh, shall I jump in? Shall I not? Am I going to fit in? Is it going to be okay? Am I going to remember how to fly? Where am I going to fit in here? Are they going to like me? You know, it's not happening. The consciousness of the bird just feels that and it just swoops. And it's one consciousness moving. And it's exactly what is happening here in the unseen. The consciousness isn't wondering, am I getting it? Am I not getting it? Oh, frustrating. I'm not in the same place. It's not, that's not happening in the true consciousness. It's just aligning and merging and moving as one. And so now the voice, the voice that is inside you, it's moving as one. And the net is, it's pulling in, it's pulling in pulling you in it's natural right and so we're moving as one and we're in the vast open landscape of consciousness we are never speaking here mind to mind because there is no such thing really as that we are always speaking self to self we are always speaking heart to heart being to being in the oneness it's a constant invitation an outstretched hand to feel your longing and to be pulled in what you cannot see into yourself and open to feel, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not a mental understanding. It's not something that we can take up in the elevator to the denser frequencies and conceptualize and, and make sense of it. it it's gone it's gone <laughs> as soon as it's conceptualized it's gone and yet it hasn't what a miracle it hasn't relax <sighs> come to the I am and it hasn't gone because it's always here it's never gone anywhere you have never gone anywhere you are always yourself you are always here now you are always this same simple presence of being 
And the knowing of this is here in the being right now. There's nothing more you could do. We could say we invite the following of the divine breadcrumbs. Feel the longing of your heart. It brings you to presence. Feel the felt sense of being. It is the presence. Recognize the aliveness of your nervous system as these words are coming and where you feel a resonance of recognition. It's like a confirmation that just happens inside. It brings a relaxation, a softening. And in the relaxation and the softening, the mind waves relax into a finer frequency of consciousness where consciousness itself is remembering itself. And you start to feel more free and more open, empty, not really so interested in all the things that have been thought about and that seem important on the surface of life. There's a felt sense of openness, expandedness, we could say, because you open to feel your boundless nature. We come to the naturalness, the essence. We come to the sameness, the oneness, where we are one, where we are the same. Before name and story, just here, where you can receive your own grace, the flow of grace that you are. You come here to the light that you are, which is the light of the being, simply being. The knowing of the being is this light, which is, it's the principle of illumination. It's, it's not a light like a worldly light. It's a light that is illumination. Illumination is the knowing where the being just is, being yourself just like this. The illumination is the confirmation in the heart of this truth. And we keep confirming this truth in the heart as we arrive here more and more deeply. And we are pulled out of distraction into a deeper remembering. It's in the silence, in the stillness of this simple presence. And as we attune and recognize this simple presence that is silent, and still, and always here, underneath the moving changing, we could say, aware of the moving changing. There's a, a natural falling into yourself. You see, we cannot go there. We cannot do it. We can fall in. Fall into the flow of grace. Fall into the vast open field of consciousness. You can start to notice that the silence is more palpable and recognizable, that the stillness is more obvious, that you often will feel yourself more deeply as the stillness and the silence, the presence first. The silence is like a peace that is undisturbable and it's not being disturbed by anything on the surface of life. It's not being disturbed, even if it seems like a thought comes and goes. It's not disturbable ever, never has been. It is the peace that you are. It is the peace that you are. In 
and here in the depths of silent peace, in the depths of being, the recognition has an aliveness in the presence. It is the aliveness of consciousness, pure consciousness. And so the deeper that we come to this recognition, the more the aliveness seems to come alive. But what is really happening is that we are deepening in the recognition as consciousness consciously awake to itself. And you feel it, it's your nervous system. So you can feel that your nervous system is like alive and pulsing. May it feel like it has a pitch in the silence. It's resonating. It has a vibration or a frequency to it. And the frequency is the knowing of this being. The knowing that this is somehow what you are. It's a part of you, let's say. It's never a recognition that the mind says, oh yes, this is what I am, right? The mind is always looking to say, well, how am I this? Well, the mind isn't this. Not in the way that it wants to be or thinks that it might discover this. It's a deep felt recognition in the being that you are here, are you here? Are you here? Where you go to, to say yes and confirm your presence, are you here? Yes, right? We travel in consciousness to feel the presence of presence and we say, yes, I am here. The amnes is here. The amnes of being is here. Confirmed, indirect experience. And then in the amnes of being, the recognition that what the I really is, is this amnes. It's the felt sense of being we discover the true I. The I, the true I, is not the person. It's not the me. That the true I is the amnes of being. The true I is the vastness, is the unbounded self. The I, we could say, that says am, I am, is not the me. It's the amnes that in a way confirms to itself, I am. But of course, it's beyond words. It's wordless, inexplicable. We just attempt to use words to point to that which is wordless. So as the words come, follow the words, but follow the words into yourself. Follow the words as a direct pointing of what is here and what you are. That the knowing of what you are is not a knowing of the mind. The knowing of this essence nature is essence knowing essence. It's not a thought. It's before the thought. It's before every thought. And this is why we speak of an intimacy, because the intimacy is immediate. The intimacy with yourself is before the thought or the name or the story. Before the I attaches to a thought, the I just is. And the I's experience of itself is the felt sense of the amnes. Which is being, simply being.
and here in the amness of being, the isness is reality. What is? The isness is reality. Just this, just as it is, just as you are, just being, just like this, where all of the projections are relaxed into an openness, an unguardedness, all of the projections that are the protection that create the sense of me and the thoughts, all of the prote prote protections and projections relax into a naturalness, into an openness, into a sense of deep, profound safety. That there's no one to trust out there. That you don't have to worry about the story of not trusting. Because deep, true trust is trusting your own naturalness, trusting yourself, trusting your essence, nature. And you come to this deep trust through being the being. There's nothing really that's moving and changing that can be trusted because it's going to move and change. <laughs> you can trust that it will change. You can trust that it won't stay the same. That's about as far as it goes. But that's the intelligence of being that knows that the moving, changing flow it changes. So let us stop getting disappointed with the essence nature of the moving and changing. Let us stop projecting disappointment on what in its essence is always going to change. Let us find the safety, the constant, the truth in our own essence nature. Let us find that which doesn't change. Let us find that which we can, we could say, trust, rely upon, <laughs> if we want to use those kinds of words. It's yourself. It's only yourself. This is where we come to, let's say, divine empowerment. Don't be fooled by those worldly ideas about being empowered as a person. Let it all go. And find the true power of being yourself where you're not reliant upon anything external or anyone external. You're not reliant upon your, let's say, your risky projections <laughs> into the world and imagining, right? It's like hedging your bets. I'll put all of my bets on, on this relationship. I'll put all of my bets or I'll put half of my bets on this job to bring me some, some kind of reward, right? And then we're disappointed. Hedge all of your bets on yourself. Put absolutely all that you are, all that you've got, right? As if you're standing at God's roulette table, put it all on God. <laughs> put it all on, all your chips, absolutely everything that you've got. Put it all on God. And no, this is where the reward is. But you've got to put it all on. You can't hedge your bets. Put a little bit on God and a little bit on the relationship, a little bit on the job and a little bit on mm, keeping my assets. You've got to put it all, give it all to God, whatever that looks like, right? It's an internal thing. You don't own anything. You don't have anything. It's a movie. Put your whole movie your whole movie, every single thread of it, put it on God. <laughs> and this is where the return comes in, that you find out when you give all that you are to what you are longing for, you find that all that you are is that, right? Here's the trust. Here's the grace. It's self-born. It's the shraddha. It's faith, true faith, right? The Shraddha is self-born. It's born out of yourself. It's born out of knowing yourself. It's a kind of confidence because nothing of the world can touch you. Nothing can take you from yourself, right? Put everything that you are into yourself, into the glory 
and be the glory, be the shining light. It's not about giving anything to anything external. It's about knowing in the depth of your, of your own knowing what, let's say it's about subtly perceiving in the depths of your own knowing, being able to perceive the inward invitation, being able to perceive what this invitation is asking and what it's really inviting. And then the how to is in the felt sense of saying yes, inside, inside your own heart, saying yes to yourself, falling into yourself so fully that all dependence and codependence, right? It's a setup out there, the world of separation. It's a crazy old, crazy old, situation we complain and complain and complain about the imbalance of power and yet we're completely codependent right it's the the let's say the collective consciousness is a is a separation is a dance of narcissism and codependence that's what collective consciousness is it's completely entangled in itself that's what separation is so let us not separate into stories about it. Let us not move in ideas about it. Let, not, let us not sit and, and ponder it in heated conversations with ideas of how to change the world or how frustrating the world is and the stories of the world. Let us see through it by coming to that which is not separate. Let us not buy into it anymore. <laughs> The whole crazy play of the world, if you're moving through mind filters and getting too close or you are entangled in, in the collective, you're in ta that's what you're entangled in. The only way to disentangle yourself is to see through your entanglement, to see through your projections and how you're bought into it. We're bought into it through the thoughts, the relationships, the jobs, the stories, the food that we eat, we're bought into it through all of our addictions and projections and imaginings, how we're so entangled. We have to come out of entanglement. And the only way to untangle is to illuminate as the illumination, as the principle of illumination. The only way to illuminate our own entanglement is to come to this truth, shine in the knowing, and then illuminate our own projections and entanglement to free ourselves into the sat, satya loka, into the truth, <laughs> into the purity, the divinity of our essence nature, to reality right? It's never, ever, 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 <laughs> ever about the world out there. Ever, ever. <laughs> You're not going to believe me until you really look at me in the eye, in the oneness and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And we will dance and we will dance and we will sing Jai Ma. In the truth, it's not out there ever. It's all about pulling in the projections. Everything, everything, everything. It gets so subtle. It gets so fine. It gets so profound. So, so bright. <laughs> right? <laughs> Please join me here. Place your bets on God. Join me here in the glory that you are, in the glory that you are. You see, <laughs> there's nothing to believe. Please do not believe me. Do not believe me. Do not imagine 
that I am anything other than you, your very own self, your very own heart. The invitation is into the glory that you are. Mm -hmm. So as these words come, we are going deeper in this incredible unfolding than there is even a precedent for, right? So don't look to books. Don't look to books to confirm it. Don't look to teachings to confirm it. What you are is before the teachings, right? You're before any teaching. True, authentic truth, <laughs> let's say. Let's, let's big it up. Let's big up the truth to the truest, truest, authentic, most genuine truth is what you are. You are it. And you can know, only know it when you are so radiantly, confidently standing in the knowing of this, where you do not need anything external to confirm it. Now, I will keep shining this light for you and confirming that you can confirm this yourself, right? <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to give you. I'm not, taking, I'm not going further than that. I will keep confirming confirming that you can confirm this yourself and I will stand here with you. I'll keep pointing, I'll keep pointing until we are dancing in the oneness all the way through, all the way through. <laughs> the beauty is that right now you can feel all this, right? Even if there's a sense of, well, I'm not all the way through and I'm it doesn't matter where you are in the unfolding because the glory is you are still the same one and there is a knowing that is radiant and shining. <laughs> and where that knowing is, it might feel like a spark or a glimmer or a little, just a little tidy little fire, right? It might not feel like it's blazing, blazing. It might feel like it is. Whatever it is, it might feel like it gets bigger and smaller. It doesn't matter. Wherever you feel the truth of the knowing, it's the same one truth. This is what Purna is. It's the wholeness that is never diminished. And you are that. Where you are that is where the peace is, where the bliss is, where the being is. You already are. Whole, divine, pure, innocent, immaculate being. You're never going to know it with the mind, but the mind is going to subside all of its radio waves, its projections into the great glory of the truth that you are. So this knowing can shine radiantly as the heart, the one heart that knows itself. If there is an imagining that you see anything out there that is other than you, bring it into your heart. Welcome it home. It is you. It is, it is one with you. And until that is known all the way through, just keep bringing everything into the heart, into the oneness, really bringing it into the light of awareness through feeling the feelings, meeting any disturbance in the nervous system. Instead of judging or projecting, meet it. Meet it in your own heart, in your own nervous system, and bring it all home. Bring all of yourself home. There's only one. Nothing is outside of you.
there is only the self. There is only the shining radiant glory. There is only God, only Ma. Let the knowing of this be so, and so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Here now, here now, here now, where you can feel the resonance of the knowing. Nothing more than just to say yes, 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 yes. Not waiting for anything to happen, not imagining anything other, just saying yes to where the shining truth is alive, alive, where the aliveness is. The aliveness is the presence of consciousness, fresh and awake, awake to itself. In the silence, in the stillness, the great glory is shining. It is to find where the sameness is, where the oneness is, where the knowing of this is, and be here. Be the light that shines, that is the, this principle of illumination. It is the self, it is the Atman, it is really Brahman. And of course, we get more, even more shiny as Ma, but it's, it's this, it's the light, the deep principle of illumination. It, it's, it's light itself, let's say. It's light, a self-sustaining power of light itself. Pure power. Here is the power. And here is how we rebalance the great seeming power imbalance on the surface of life is to come to the true power. We don't ponder it in the world. We can never ever change the world. The world is your mind, but you can change into yourself out of the mind consciousness and separation and into yourself by coming to the essence nature shift to the true power the self-sustaining light that is the one self shining in the knowing of itself and here nothing has ever happened nothing has ever happened just this just this just this <laughs> 